you see how the internet and internet services are growing, it is exponential. And there are still billions of people left on planet Earth to come on the internet. And that's going to cause an even greater swell in the way the internet is being used. Data centers do a lot of things that users don't see. Even something as simple as playing a video or joining a video conference involves a lot of computations and a lot of communication under the covers, and each one of those things create carbon emissions. We only see a screen and the reality underneath, underpinning all of today's internet, people don't see it. It also hides its impact from the applications that are running. So the applications themselves don't know how much energy they're using or the carbon emissions associated with that energy. So if you wanted the application to reduce its carbon consumption, the first step of that is for the application to be aware of the carbon. And as a result, this has become an important problem for researchers like us, as well as the industry as a whole to tackle. So Carbon First is a project that is funded by the U.S. National Science Foundation and it focuses on designing sustainable computer systems. Carbon First is a complete redesign of computing systems like data centers and the internet, putting carbon at the beginning. If we want to systematically add carbon efficiency as a first system design criteria, how we should revise those core mathematical models and revisit them and redesign the solutions. And part of this project is kind of elevating the management of energy and carbon as a resource that applications can explicitly control. So to reduce the carbon emission, we need to know the carbon intensity of the electricity. So carbon intensity is the amount of carbon emissions that occur for, say, producing one unit of energy. So for example, a wind is relatively carbon free, but if you're using coal to produce that energy, you're actually doing a lot of carbon emissions to produce that same amount of energy. So a carbon-aware application is one that's going to be responsive to changes in energy's carbon intensity and in renewable energy availability. Where we began was, how do you monitor the carbon emissions of software applications, of computing hardware, and of cloud platforms? Because that's really the first step before you can optimize the carbon emissions. So Ecovisor is a software and hardware system that we develop that allows cloud applications to monitor their energy and carbon consumption and then optimize that carbon footprint. The software is unaware of the energy considerations and Ecovisor is really the concept that you can make those available to the software and the software can make its own decisions based on carbon. And what virtualization does is it basically gives every application the illusion that it's controlling its own computer. An ecovisor is kind of the same thing, but for the energy system that applications use. And the ecovisor exposes the reality of today's energy systems to not only computer applications, but users in general, and give them control, the ability to decide when to use energy. The reason why computing is really interesting is that unlike most kind of industrial scale, large electrical loads, it has unique dimensions of flexibility. So temporal workload shifting is essentially shifting the work you need to do on the time axis. So for example, if you are actually looking at a period of a day, and let's say that during the afternoon times, there's a lot of renewables because of sunlight and solar. And in the evenings, perhaps you have less renewables, and so the carbon intensity of your grid is higher during the evening. So if you could delay the work to a time period where the energy supply is greener, then you can do the same work but reduce the emissions. So that's the same concept in the computing world. You can actually move when you do computations to time periods where the energy supply is the greenest. Likewise, spatial workload shifting is simply choosing explicitly kind of where I run my workload. So I might choose to run in a region where the carbon intensity is low instead of running in an area where the carbon intensity of energy is high. 
So first we measure the carbon intensity of different regions, and then later we have the optimization solutions and then select the best region to ship to workloads. So which means that these things come at a trade-off and that you have to sacrifice a little bit of job completion time to minimize your carbon footprint. To be able to ship load from carbon intensive locations to less carbon intensive locations, or in time, you need a way of predicting the carbon intensity. Carbon cast is a forecasting technique for predicting the future carbon intensity of energy. So just like a weather forecast would predict you know, future temperatures or future rain, uh, carbon cast is gonna predict the future uh, carbon intensity of your energy supply. Power is gonna become an increasingly scarce resource. We're already seeing that now. And so systems that are flexible enough to use power when and where it's available and to use power that's clean, I think it's gonna become increasingly important. The good news is any data center can be made carbon aware, whether it was built 20 years ago or it was built two months ago. All of the carbon awareness comes through implementing software applications that run on these data centers, like the EcoVisor. Carbon First dealt very effectively with carbon reduction in the context of the internet, uh, in, the, in the context of data centers. The next project is taking it to an even bigger level. And this project is called CODEC, Computational Decarbonization. There is transportation, there is agriculture, there are so many other parts of society that need to be sustainable. And we feel that computation and computer science can play a big role in decarbonizing a lot of the societal infrastructure. The energy consumption, the importance of computing to society is only gonna increase. The most exciting thing for us is that we can develop technological solutions to addressing a societal problem, which is that of climate change. I hope that we not only have a smart, intelligent future, we also have a green future. And it's going to be very essential for probably the survival of the planet that we actually are able to invent computational tools to further the cause of sustainability.